This was the very first time ever where somebody could legitimately play an interactive cartoon. It was hand-drawn art. It was an interactive cartoon. Our goal really was to do justice to the movie, which was a huge hit at the time. We could use everything that's good about the movie. Yes. There was no restrictions. Our last work in directly with the movie studio rather than through a game publisher. The biggest challenge was just being true to the art style and keeping everything on model and making sure that it looked, that it was up to the standards that we all knew to be Disney standards. Wow. They hired Disney Feature Animation to do the hand-drawn animation. Our team was incredibly excited about that because to have a team full of animators that work with pencils, to have them work on the Disney project at this level was incredible. But what we didn't understand was they would actually give us access to the people who made Aladdin, the directors, the animators in Florida, for example. That changed everything. Our lead animator, Mike Dietz, ended up going to Florida and working with the Disney animators. As an animator, getting to deal with Disney feature animation getting to fly down there, work in the Disney Animation Studios with like some of the greatest animators on the planet and learn from them and just be around them. Like they set me up with like a desk in the Disney Animation Studio and I'm sitting there drawing and I'm going, what is going on here? It was like a dream come true. Their stuff was great and it was really inspirational and we learned a lot about color and how they used it. Because a lot of times some of the images can be quite simple, but they work, yeah. they're balanced, so they're doing things you're not really seeing, yeah. you know, but they're communicating to you and they're, they're just very, very talented. You can tell you're, you're dealing with very, very talented artists, so it's nervous. It was pretty unfair for the rest of the industry, right? It's yeah. like, you know, if you're an animator and we've got Disney feature animation on our team. Well, so the way we worked was because animation is so expensive and it's a multi-step process, the first thing you do in animation is you do a pencil test, which is just a rough drawing. And then normally, if you're making a film, you would watch the pencil test of the film and go, oh, we want to make these changes to the animation and make these revisions and add this here and take this out here. And then when it's, you're happy with it, then you do a cleaned up version of the drawing. And then you look at that, and then you ink it, and then you paint it and color it and finish it. That's a very expensive process. And you wouldn't want to go through that process on something that you're not sure is going to be in the game. So what we had developed a little bit on Jungle Book, but it really started on Aladdin, was to take those pencil test drawings that we were getting from Disney that were not finished, and we would digitize those and flood fill them white, and then put them in as sprites in the game. And then we could test it. We could play test it, see what was working, see if the mechanic was working at all, but also see if the animation itself was working. And then, when it was, only then would we would move on to the final. What we would do, we would take these you know, images from Disney, and then I think I would just paint it without thinking too much about the tiles and breaking it down. So I'd paint the bigger shapes, and then after that, I would try and figure out, now how do I make this into a tile set, and how do I make it efficient so we can actually fit it in the memory of the game. And then once you got it to that, then you'd have to go in and clean it up, and then sometimes it was still kind of crunchy, and then there was a whole process of going in and touching up the stuff that wasn't looking real great. That was just a frame by frame manual process that was really difficult because you had to have someone who had a sensitivity towards both animation and pixel art so that they could touch up what was there without like drawing over it and losing the sub-pixel movement. For me personally, the biggest challenge was educating the feature film animators who were used to animate at 24 frames per second and having as many frames as they needed to and like no restrictions. Teaching them what the restrictions were of animating for a video game and some of the techniques that we used to use to get around those limitations and then try and like get their superpowers as amazing animators to execute these techniques that we had developed to get the best out of the limited resources we have and make the animation feel like it was Disney feature quality animation even though it was far less frames and you know just crunchy resolutions. Oof. It was a process and it was a process just figuring out what that pipeline was and then once we knew what the pipeline was like to actually just run all that animation through that was time consuming and expensive. 
what's so impressive is the fact that with the limited palette that was on the Genesis, we were still able, I felt, to sort of faithfully reproduce what the animated movie had, the colors and the look and the feel of the artwork. And then that came down to the fact that we did have really good source reference material from Disney. We had big printed out frames of the movie right the way through the movie, so we had a lot of reference, which was something quite unique up to that point we didn't have a lot of reference for games when you looked at games back then everything looked kind of angular you know platforms and <laughs> girders and crates and so people would have a tendency to draw in squares or uh, Absolutely, along that line yes. and with Aladdin seeing those backgrounds I think we were the first to really break that we created more large shapes of buildings we, that you couldn't see the tiles it wasn't so obvious yeah. we were really trying to capture the spirit that was tricky that was challenging and sometimes it's funny you go back and you see stuff and I know my kids will be looking at Aladdin and they go did you do that Dad? did you do that and you can't remember, can't remember. <laughs> like that's how like, closely uh, everyone managed to get their style so I look at something and go oh, yeah I think I did that but Steve could have done that or Lynn could have done that yeah, I'm actually not I, sure I think, yeah, I, <laughs> I've got a memory that I could have done yeah. it I remember certain things I did but I don't remember everything Back then, it was like, what? How are they doing this? The animation was the smoothest the industry had ever seen. You knew, hey, this is, this is a very special game we're working on. And the amazing thing is, if you put in Aladdin today and you play it, it holds up. Now, how many video games 25 years later can you say graphically can hold up and you can still find it interesting graphically. And that's why I knew it was going to be a big hit because it looked like nothing. I couldn't wait for people to see this. Sometimes you just know.